Okay, it's about 10 o'clock at night. We're at the charge point here at the Maverick Station in uh, Washington, Utah. So I just wanted to show you something here, though. So not mo not many people go to the back side here, which is the better side. 26, 29 kilowatt hours since this thing was commissioned. It's not very much. 44,000 watts is how much it's drawing right now from the AC mains. So 45, 44,000 watts AC. Now if we come over here to the charging station itself, it's only drawing about 43,500. So that's cool and all that this thing is here, that we can even fast charge it all. Um, there's, there's this huge transformer here. So this is a 75 kVA transformer, 75,000 watt transformer. That's a big beefy transformer. So that is feeding this charging station. That big giant box is feeding this single charging station. It's kind of crazy that that giant box is what's needed just to feed this single charging station. So this can only charge one car at a time. How in the heck are we gonna do this when every car is electric and every one of those pumps over there um, is replaced with one of these chargers? So I wanna talk a little bit about demand charges. Whenever a commercial customer uh, uses power, they're not only billed for the energy that they consume, they're also billed for the demand. A 50,000 watt charging station is gonna have a $500 a month demand charge. Wow, and that, that doesn't even count the energy. Um, typically the energy costs for a commercial company are a lot lower, industrial even lower than that. They might only pay you know a couple of bucks for the energy to charge an electric car, but their demand charge will be $500 a month whether it's one car charging up all month or thousands of cars a month they're still going to pay five hundred dollars a month so if, if it's just just me if i go to this middle of nowhere charging station and i'm the only one that uses it all month they're going to be billed five hundred dollars a month i'll be billed like 17 18 bucks but the, the owner of the charging station 500 a month plus a couple of dollars for the energy i use it's like, how is that profitable at all? In fact, it's not profitable until you have like a hundred cars using one of these a month. And that's just one charging station that's relatively slow. Electrify America charging stations that are coming online, they're 150,000 watts. So already for one charging station, let me do the math here, 150,000 watts, so 150 kilowatts times $10 a month, that's a $1,500 a month demand charge. So, and in the Fillmore example, let's just say, let's just for easy math, you know, in Fillmore we had, uh, we needed 48 supercharger style things for the same amount of throughput as 24 gas pumps. So 50 charging stalls at 150,000 watts. So $1,500 a month per charging stall times 50 that's $75,000 a month in demand charge alone. How is that even gonna work? Interesting thing, I'm not 100% sure this is how Tesla operates, but I'm pretty sure this is how they're able to have a global fleet of charging stations and not break the bank. They are doing something that no one else is thinking about. So a few months ago I took a couple of my kids to Arches National Park. Great time. We, we took, we drove the Bolt. I wanted to do this in the Chevy Bolt. Uh, we, we made it down to Arches. I got to see a lot of things. It was really pretty, really breathtaking. But um, one of the places we had to charge at it was, it was a, a KOA campsite, and I planned this ahead of time because there was no way a Chevy Bolt is going to charge up at a supercharger for Tesla. Chevy did not want to partner with Tesla on this, and so we camped two nights. Each night we would charge up our little Bolt while we were camping, 
Meanwhile, across the street, literally 200 yards away, is a supercharger site where Teslas are coming and going and charging up at darn near 100,000 watts, 120,000 watts. <sighs> so, but what I, well, I, I had to walk over there and I, and I noticed a couple of boxes in the back and I assumed those were just the big inverters that go to the charging stations themselves. But they, something else was very odd about this site. Unlike the power meter on the back of a charge point station that's, that's drawing darn near 50,000 watts from the grid, the Tesla supercharger power meter it's only drawing 2.5 kilowatts from the grid. I thought that was really odd. I even went back at another time and I had to take a picture of this when a Tesla was physically charging. Here's a Model X charging, probably drawing 90,000 watts at the time from the supercharger. Meanwhile, the power meter on this supercharger site, it's only drawing 2,500 watts. I'm like, how is Tesla doing that? Whoa, wait a minute, this is gonna be revolutionary. Instead of being billed thousands of dollars a month for demand charges, Tesla is only gonna be billed $25 a month for a demand charge, is that right? Yeah, they've got some kind of a storage, I believe, at every one of their superchargers. So instead of being billed thousands of dollars a month in demand charges, Tesla's only being built, billed $25 a month. Two and a half kilowatts constantly filling up those batteries. Meanwhile, a uh, Model X or S or 3 comes up, plugs in, they're getting 120,000 watts possibly fed back into their car. Meanwhile, the grid is only seeing two and a half thousand watts pulled from it. So I think Tesla has, they've already got the vision. They're already doing it. They are, they've solved it. Um, gas pumps are kind of a similar analogy. There's not an oil refinery right at every gas pump, right? There's not a big oil refinery out back making gasoline and trying to supply the demand. They have a big gas tank that gets delivered and filled. You've got, um, just like every gas station has a battery of you, if you will, a battery of fuel in their tanks, ready to just pump really quickly into all the cars. Um, same with the supercharging station. You're going to have to just have a large stationary battery. So the grid, it doesn't have to supply seven and a half million watts instantly on, instantly off, instantly on, and instantly off, and try and recover from that huge surge. They don't have to do that. Tesla's already solved this. The electric grid loves constant draw. It's super predictable, it's manageable. So going back to the Maverick station in Fillmore, Utah, that one exit where the Maverick is located, there's actually three gas stations at that exit. There's the Maverick, there was like a Texaco, and there was a Sinclair, I think. And all total, that one exit had 88 gasoline pumps. And that doesn't even count the big diesel pumps for uh, big, you know, big semi trucks. There's probably a couple of dozen of those um, across all three of these gas stations. <clears throat> and so, if to make all of these electric, yeah, you're gonna have to have a lot of superchargers, and then you're gonna have to have a lot of mega chargers if you're gonna make all the semi trucks electric. Um, so basically, Tesla is doing this already. They've got 10,000 stalls globally and they're gonna double that it sounds like at the end of this year they're planning on doubling that um, so really we just need to keep doing what Tesla ha is doing and all the other car companies get on board get on board with this join Tesla help them with their network so your cars can use them so cuz I want to travel cross country too in my Chevy Bolt come on Chevy you can do this too. You're Chevy. You're GM for heaven's sakes. Don't be left in the dust. Don't go the way of Blockbuster Video. Don't go the way of Kodak. Let's think ahead here and let's let's follow this. Anyway, um, so really that's that's how we solve it. Every every gas pump we replace with two 
superchargers and every supercharger is backed up by stationary battery storage. So the demand charges are low and the burden of the grid is kept manageable and actually helpful to the grid. And that's how we do it. Problem solved. Every, every type of vehicle, whether it's a semi-truck or a little sedan on the road or motorcycle, every vehicle, if overnight became electric, this is how we would solve it. We're done. Let's just do it. Tesla's already doing it. Um, everyone else just needs to get on board. GM, Ford, Toyota, Hyundai, BMW, Daimler. Jeez, you guys, come on. Let's get in the 21st century here. So I hope you've enjoyed this series of videos and um, leave me a comment if you'd like any other videos done. Subscribe to my channel. I'd love to do more videos. Let me know. So um, you guys have a good day.